Smile 2 is directed by Parker Finn. It is the continuation of the original Smile that was released just two years ago. This film stars Naomi Scott as a pop star who finds herself in a similar situation our protagonist found themselves in the first film. Basically, this demon-like spirit possession figure latches onto a person where they are seeing pretty much just everyone around them smile. There's obviously a lot more than that, and this film actually does expand a lot on the lore, more than we saw in the first film. But these films are very much based in trauma core, trying to have this deeper meaning behind some of the feelings and things they are seeing, and it really makes them question their own sanity, as there are full-on characters that do not exist outside of their head in reality. So overall, I found this movie rather fun, even more than the original film. If they pump one of these out every two years, years with a different protagonist having these problem, I would not be at all upset. That's not to say this film doesn't have issues, because there were moments of it that I felt were rather tedious, specifically in its length, and I'm not usually one that complains about how long films are. For me, it's more about what you are doing with the length than how much you are trying to keep my attention, and I think this film you could have cut down by 20 to 30 minutes and we would have been fine. There are many scenes that feel rather repetitive and even redundant in their execution, as this film follows a rhythm where a scene is set up, she finds her herself isolated and alone, cue the obvious jump scare that's going to happen, and have her wake up to reality. This situation happens over and over again within this film, and it doesn't seem to progress the story forward much. I think I was also rather shocked to see how much this film relies on jump scares, because in my opinion, I think that's something that modern horror movies have kind of moved away from. I think in the 90s and mid-2000s, that was a crutch that a lot of horror movies relied on, and I think the universe that this film exists in has enough scary elements that we don't really need to be doing this. And I didn't see the first film in theaters, so I can't really comment or compare the jump scares from this film to that one, because watching it at home, it's a much different effect. But seeing this in theaters, it just felt like they kept on happening, and they were also rather predictable, as you can obviously tell when one was about to happen. But jump scares aside, there are still plenty of horrifying moments within this film, and I think the biggest reason this worked so well was the central performance by Naomi Scott. She's someone I am surprised has not popped off more, because five years ago, when she was in a lab, in and Charlie's Angels, it felt like she was the next big star. So it's rather a bummer that she hasn't done much since, but I really hope this kind of gives her an extra boost so we can see her in more things. There are large parts in this movie where she is completely alone and the entire premise is sold on what she's doing on screen. Most of the best horror films of all time rely heavily on the performance from the protagonist, so it's no shock that when you have a great performance, your movie is elevated as notch. I do think this film is worth seeing, and if you are a horror fan, you're gonna have a good time within the theater. It's not the most groundbreaking revolutionary film you will see this year, but it has some unique elements to it, and I think the direction specifically has such a specific style, especially now seeing two feature-length films from this director, you can definitely see their voice and style within these films. There's certainly nitpicks to be had with the plot, and I think especially once you get to the end, the audience kind of finds themselves questioning the own reality of what actually happened. There are moments where entire scenes are cancelled out by the reveal that it was all in the protagonist's head the entire time, and while I think the film wants it to be this gotcha moment, I found myself rather frustrated frustrated, not actually knowing what happened at the end. Was this character real? Did this plotline actually happen? It's not fully explained, which I don't need movies to always hold my hand through it, but this film has a character that solely exists for the exposition and explain to the audience what is happening. And so if you're going to go to that length to expand on this universe, I kind of wish they would have cleaned it up just a little bit. That being said, despite having a mostly new cast in this film, it does have a cool way it ties in with the original. So I think there is a chance if this film does well and it gets a third, that third film has the opportunity to really tie into this one. And like I said earlier, if they decide to pump one of these out every two years, I think that would be a blast. So those are my thoughts on Smile 2. Have you seen it? What do you think? Comment below, and I will see you next time.